Christmas. Yes. Grateful for our families. Yes. Hallelujah. Just, just shower your love on us every day. We're grateful for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you loved us first. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus concerning us today. So we are grateful, thankful, Lord. Hallelujah. And it flows, you know, from our heart, the issues of life all yes. about. You know, and you know what? Hey, see, things happen to all of us. <laughs> Praise. Things happen. The Bible says God is always great, the just on the unjust as well. And things great. Well, it happens to all of us. Just because yes, we 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 yes. in the body of Christ it means we are immune for things that happen. But see, in the midst of all that it goes on, praise the Lord, yes. we have an attitude of gratitude. Yes. And so we're grateful. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. And I ask people, I say, how you doing? They say, well, it could be a whole lot better. And I say, yeah, it could be a whole lot worse, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So be grateful. Praise the Lord. And not so much in what you don't have. Be grateful for what you do have. Yes. Be thankful. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And see, God can take that little and turn it into much. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I'm grateful, praise the Lord, in the small things. And see, if I can be grateful in the small things, then praise the Lord, I'll be grateful in the much things yes. that happen. Hallelujah. Because he's God of the small and he's all God of the much. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we're grateful. So we say good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise the Lord. How many people are glad here today, huh? Yeah. I am glad. Yeah. Praise the Lord. A glory to God. Now my like David says, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we say welcome, welcome, welcome. And to all of our Facebook family, I want to say welcome to you, Facebook Live. Say good morning, good morning to you. Praise the Lord. So you go ahead and hit like and hit share, hit like and share. And uh, thank you for you taking out your busy schedule to be a part of our worship experience on this particular day that the Lord has made. And we're just so grateful. A color to God that you tuned in this morning. It may be a delayed broadcast. So thank you for watching. Praise the Lord. But if you're watching live again, don't forget to hit like and hit share, hit like and hit share. And to be blessed by the Lord because we're going to have an awesome time in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The written word, the spoken word, and more important, the living word. So again, hey, get ready, get ready, get ready. So you want to go ahead and get uh, your pencil and paper and, and uh, highlight it. Great. Prepare to take some good copious notes. Make sure you get your Bible out and it's going to be so awesome whether it's a written, whether it's in your iPhone, iPad, iPod, iRod, whatever it is, the Word of God, it's going to be so good. Okay, praise the Lord. So we're excited to be here today in Jesus' name. And also want to say happy Grandparents Day today, 2022. To all of our grandparents, we want to thank you, salute you, praise the Lord, uh, for raising not only your children, but also your children's children, and sometimes your children's 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 children. Praise the Lord, glory to God, and you play a vital part, uh, not only in the physical and educational development, but also in the spiritual development, so we thank you for what you have embedded upon your children and upon your grandchildren. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, and what when they're old, they have not departed. So we're training all our children, but we're training our grandchildren. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And listen, don't be afraid to challenge them with things of the word of God. They can memorize everything else. Praise the Lord. They can memorize the word of God. Praise the Lord. So go over scripture, go over with again, 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 and put it in, you know, as well. And I'll tell you, anytime we need more grandparents and grandfathers and grand uh, 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 grand uh, mothers, praise the Lord, and grand uncles and grand aunts and grand cousins and all the grands, praise the Lord to get the seal upon our children and children's children. 
thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So again, congratulations for you that you have, and uh, we know that you truly will be blessed because of your presence. So you are ready for this word today? Oh my goodness, go on and God. Oh, glory to God. So listen, you watch this by Facebook Live. Again, go ahead and like and share and be ready for this word of God today. It's going to be so awesome in the name of Jesus. So let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. Let's go ahead and make this confession of faith. Uh, if you would, say these familiar words. Praise the Lord. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the dynamic, the powerful, the ever increasing, the life changing word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess. I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess. I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess. After hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, and mine is the power. For thine is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever, and ever, and ever. For this is my receiving day, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Again, this is our God's amazing favor to you in 2022. We're celebrating 30 years of the gospel of God's grace. Praise the Lord. Take it from Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verse 52 in the New American Standard Version. And it says, Jesus kept on increasing in wisdom and stature in favor of God and with man. So we're going to continue on in what we've been teaching for the last uh, several weeks on this subject of experiencing God's divine favor through answers prayers. Experiencing God's uh, favor through answers, answers prayers. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, brother, uh, 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 Vince, can you get to have a copy of one of those phrases? Okay. You got extra copy? All right, you got Vince, you got extra copy for that. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll make sure y'all get these. All right. Glory to God. So we've been teaching again just on grace, and uh, we define grace again as 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 uh, God's merited, uh, undeserved, uh, unearned favor. Uh, we've taken the the acronym grace, G R A C E. We said it stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. We said that grace is God's strength to do what we cannot do for ourselves. So it's simply, we say that grace is God doing us a favor. Say this, grace, grace is, God is God doing me a favor. Doing me a favor. Say it again. Say grace, grace is, God is God doing me a favor. Doing me a favor. Hallelujah. So as follows our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's important to realize that this God's grace, it touches every area of a person's life. And when it touches the life, this is what it does. It brings peace, it, it brings strength, it brings freedom, it brings contentment, uh, it brings boldness in, in your life. So uh, it's important now to focus on the experience of the favor of God over understanding the favor of God. Because sometimes I just don't understand, praise the Lord. There's a song that says, I just don't why, know why Jesus loved me. I just don't know why he cared. Yeah. I just don't know why he sacrificed his life for me. Yeah. But thank God I'm glad. Aren't yeah. you glad today? Yeah. So glad that he did. Praise yeah. the Lord. That favor. Yeah. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So like I don't understand how black cow can, can eat green grass and give white yeah. milk and yellow butter. I don't understand it. But I experience it. Yes. And God says, I want you to experience the favor of God that I have upon you. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I just believe this is our set time of favor. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I speak the set time of favor upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you will experience this set time of favor and it'll get stronger and stronger and stronger, stronger in your spirit, stronger in your soul, stronger in your body, stronger in your marriage, stronger in your relationship, and stronger in your pocketbook. Praise the Lord. Stronger in your peace. I believe, I prophesy this set time of favor is getting stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so uh, today I want to talk about, uh, again, going to John chapter 15, verse 7. I want to pick up this again, you know, because I, after that, I think I'm finishing God's and all, I want you to give him some more. Praise the Lord. Amen. Continue to speak. But I want to talk about what it means to abide in Christ. Again, abiding in Christ. So in, 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 in uh, John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus is teaching his disciples and uh, 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 they left the disciples up in the upper room and he says these prophetic words to them. He says, now, uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, I was looking at this and, 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 and I was looking at Jesus' ministry and uh, when Jesus started off his uh, his, his ministry and preaching over in Matthew, the Bible says he was preaching to the multitudes. And uh, people were coming all over to hear him preach. You know, there was hundreds, maybe, you know, uh, thousands of people that were there that were preaching to do that. You know, And then uh, the numbers began to dwindle down a little bit. It went from 5,000, you know, people just come to hear a message, you know, and uh, and, and, and you know things start coming up and then uh, you know he had seven disciples you know and he would send them out two by two and and he would give them instructions so it went from thousands and thousands to maybe to seventy that we have but then over in John the Bible said that when Jesus began to teach he said there were those who didn't walk with him anymore and then it went down to twelve and, and then uh, one of them, Judas, we know that he basically, you know, uh, betrayed Christ, and so he left. And so it's 11. And so we're talking about thousands and thousands down to 11. And, and Jesus was asking this question. He, he said, Ronnie, he says, will you continue to abide in me even when the crowds go down? Will, 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 you, will you continue, you know, to let my words abide in you even when it seems those will fall by the wayside. Will, will, will you continue to abide in me? See, this is not a suggestion. He, he's given a statement that says, now if you abide in me, listen, no, no matter what everybody else is doing or what everybody is not doing, I don't want you to focus on them, I want you to focus on me. If you abide in me and my words are abide in you, then guess what? You can ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. Amen. And we stated that this statement is, is true. Why? Because Jesus is always right. Say this, Jesus is always right. Jesus is always right. He's, he's, all, he's never been wrong about anything. Praise the Lord. And we say that this, this scripture basically has to deal more with you getting your answer prayers. Uh, praise the Lord based on what you do. Instead of what God does. Hallelujah. Because you look at this, it says again, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will add what you desire and shall be done to you. So the word you is meant to in this particular scripture. Hallelujah. And so uh, uh, Jesus was says, now I'm going to show you what this thing about abiding in me. See, abiding in me. What, what's that symbol mean? See, abiding not just in Jesus, but abiding in who he is, abiding in what he taught, Abiding in what he commanded, abiding what he's doing for you right now, what he did for you on the cross, what he's doing. He said, I need you to abide in that. Hallelujah. So as we look at this scripture, John chapter 15, verse 7, it's a myth because if you just study John chapter 15, and from verse 4 to verse uh, 10, the word abide is mentioned. Nine times. Hallelujah. In your scripture. And he kept saying, Abide, abide, abide. Now keep in mind that Jesus is always right. 
And when Jesus says something over and over and over again, he says, wait just a minute, I need to get your attention. See, I need to get your attention off of what's going on in the world. I need to get your attention what's going on, what's in the, in, the, in the new, get your attention away from that. Even this, get your attention away from what your family members are doing or not doing. Amen. Even from what your friends may be thinking and not thinking. I know so easy to get caught in that. He says, but what I need to do, I need you to abide in me. Focus on me. Focus on yeah. what I said. Focus on who I am. Focus on what I talk. Focus on what I'm doing yeah. for you right now. See, I need you abiding there. So he keeps saying it. Abide, abide, abide. Hallelujah. If I say abide. Abide. So we can, uh, can go conclude that this word abide, it has great significance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So to abide means to live. It's to live with. It means to dwell. It, it means to be constant and to remain. Even in the midst of circumstances which will try to detour you or distract you from abiding. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. So listen, abiding in Christ and his words abiding in us is the key to having our prayers answered. See what he says? He says, no, he says, if you abide in me, watch this, and my words abide in you, the words of Jesus, the words you read, with we, rever we, we reverence those words. We elevate those words above any other words in the Bible. The words that Jesus says, or the words that's spoken about Jesus, the Christ, praise the Lord. This you focus on that. I mean, I got to lie because he's always right. He, he's never been wrong about anything. He knows everything. So I have to abide in that, in what he said, not in what he, in what he taught, and what he commanded, what he's doing for us on the cross, what he's doing for us right now. He said, and his words, which we elevate those words, what? Because Jesus says, the words I speak unto you are spirit in their life. Yes. Hallelujah. They, 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 these words I speak come from the very throne of God. This is not my own words. I just didn't make up that. I hear what the Father says, and I, I tell you what the Father says, so therefore I need for your words to be my words. Why? Because watch this now. Every time Jesus spoke words, that shows his faith. Yes. Every time. When he says something, he's expressing his faith. Did Jesus have faith? Yeah. Why? Because he spoke. And he put faith in his words. And we know that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So every time Jesus spoke something, he heard it, praise the Lord, and it came from God. So what happens is we take those same words that Jesus spoke to come to the Father, and when we get it in our mouths and speak it, what we're doing, we're releasing our faith. Yes. Amen. Well, I need to see it. Well, if you need to see it, you don't need faith. Amen. <laughs> see, I don't need to have faith. I'm standing right now. Amen. It's, I, I'm doing it. But when I can't see it, I need to release my faith. How do I release my faith? The words. And not just any words through the words of Jesus. So when I'm abiding in what Jesus says and speaking what Jesus word, now what happens is I can ask or desire, ask my desires, what I desire, and it shall be done. Not it might, not that it's a baby, not that a chance, it shall be done. Why? Because I'm taking the words of Jesus. So the key thing is abiding in Jesus and his words abide in us. So today what I want to do is I want to go over with you three ways of how we can abide in Christ. All right? Three ways. Now remember Christ was not Jesus' last name. Christ is a title, which means the anointed one and his anointing, or the one who's loved by God. So I'm going to show you three ways how you can abide in the anointed one, his anointing, 
who's God's son, who's love. Just three ways today. Now, there could be a bunch of ways, but I just want to narrow it down to here. Here. And again, you watch this broadcast, listen to my Facebook Live, go ahead and like it and share. Please, sir, please, ma'am, make sure you got your pen, paper, your highlighter, you take some colors, though, because if you get a hold of this, notice, you can abide in Christ and his words abide in you, then you can ask what you will. Well, are all parts of the Bible? Yeah, all parts of the Bible are important. But I'm talking about when you get your prayer text. And many times you may be wondering why your prayers are not being answered. The question is, are you abiding in him? Um, abiding in Jesus. What does that mean? When I'm abiding in what does that mean? See, people say, I'm abiding in Jesus. What does that mean? Say, I got to abide in who he is. I have to abide in what he said. I have to abide in what he taught. And I abide in what he's doing for me right now that he did on the cross. So today, three ways we abide in Christ. Number one, by being conformed to his image. Number two, by having the mind of Christ. And by number three, by walking as Jesus walked. Those are three ways. Again, number one, by being conformed to Jesus' image. Number two, by having the mind of Christ. And number three, by walking as Jesus walked. And I guarantee, my friends, if you will start focus on that, being conformed to his image, then being also having the mind of Christ, and being walking as Jesus walked, and do it consistently over and over again, you abide in Jesus, and his words abide in you. Now what happens is, you have an interest to ask what you will, and it'll be done. Hallelujah, glory to God. So let's go over this, we're just gonna take our time, praise the Lord, and just go over and over and over, so you get it in your spirit. Hallelujah. So number one, the first way you abide in Christ, number one, listen, is you are being conformed to his image. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Now this is Paul writing to the church at Rome. He's writing to Christians, all right? And that he had talked about, you know, you know, all things work together for good to them who love the Lord and who are called to the we, we love to quote Romans 8 28. We love that. All, all things work together to them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. But we stop reading at verse 29. Now I want to pick up at verse 29 now. Watch it. And again, the key is we have to conform to this image if we're going to abide in Christ. He says, it. He says, For whom he foreknow, who God foreknow, he also predestined. Why? To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. All right? So God saved us, not because we were the best thing looking on the block. All right? He really didn't even save us because he felt sorry for us. But there was a purpose that he saved us, and the Bible says to be conformed to his image, to be the form to the image of Jesus. So it says here, it says, Jesus Christ is our model and pattern, and we represent him. As models of him, we should bear a resemblance to Jesus Christ, both as our Lord and Savior. Now two words, key words here. We resemble him and we represent him. Two words. If I'm going to be conformed to the image of Jesus, I want to make sure I resemble him first and represent him. All right? Now, uh, it's amazing, you know, because, you know, we've got some members of our church, and I love all of our members, you know. But uh, we've got some members of our church that I see them, and then when I see their daughters, first time out of my mouth, I'm like, oh. I, 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 I remember, I think the first time I saw you, you Sister Marcia, you know, and I saw Cynthia, I had to do a double take. I like, I like, she, she, she looks good like you. <laughs> I mean, just like, you know, you know, you know. And, and then, oh, when I, when I saw uh, Sister Allie and Veronica, I like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I like, and don't let what the hell I say. Oh my goodness, it's like it's a double thing. I said, uh, is that the one? It's a It's a Why? Because, see, their daughters came from them. 
and their daughters came from them, they resembled them. Well, we came for Jesus, hallelujah, and so we are resembled and look like him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It'll be resembling. In other words, listen, the devil, listen, should be so confused that he can't recognize whether it's Jesus, whether it's us. Because we look so more like Jesus. And not only do we resemble him, but we also reflect and we also represent him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we're not alone. I've never seen him first. I've maybe seen pictures of him, whatever, but how do I know I'm looking like Jesus? I resemble Jesus that we have. All right? Here it is. I've got it down here. Listen, we resemble Jesus by being in his holiness. In his, if I say holiness. holiness. Now, holiness is not a bad word. Holiness is not a denomination. All right? Holiness is, is it means to be be whole it means be whole and complete in oneness with him. You know, we're not turn this, but I think over in uh, John chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus is praying. And uh, he's praying to his father, and one of the things he prays to his father, he says, Father, he says, he told to his followers, he says, Now, Father, make them one. As you are in me and I'm in you, make them one in us. What are you talking about? In holiness. In this oneness that, that, that we have. He's not talking about basically, you know, how long your dress is, or you know, how you wear your hair, whether you have makeup and all. He's not talking about that. He's talking about this oneness in the Father. That Father, I want to be one in you. Jesus, I want to be one in you. I want to be together. You know, and so when you have this oneness, listen, you're walking in holiness. Listen, your agenda is no longer so much important. It's oneness with him. And so the scripture says, listen, we conform to the image of Jesus in oneness. Everybody say oneness. Oneness. Hallelujah. See, one of the reasons why people are so confused today is because they don't want to be one in Jesus. And see, if you can't be one in Jesus, then you're going to be all over the place. Yeah. And every little wind of doctrine comes, and everything comes, you fall in that. But I'm so rooted and grounded, wrapped and tied, as old folks said, being conformed to the image of Jesus. Why? Again, I want to resemble him, and I want to also reflect him, or I want to represent him. Now watch this. Here's the other aura. Number one, I resemble. Number two, I represent. And then number three, I respond. I resemble, I represent, and now I respond. And listen, when I respond in the appropriate way, what I'm doing, I'm being conformed to his image. See, people say, well, I, I heard what Jesus says, but I don't do what he said. See, you're not responding. You will never be conformed to his image. I resemble him, I represent him, and I respond to him. I answer to him. We answer to Jesus, hallelujah. He's a savior of the world. He's our Lord. He's our big brother. He, he's our, our, our gladiator. Listen, he, he's our redeemer. He's our lover. He's done all this. So I respond to him. He's always right. Yes. I got to respond to somebody who's always right. Amen. See, one of the first things I had to learn that would come is that, see, outside of Jesus, I'm not right. I'm talking about when it comes to things of God. I'm not talking about when it comes to your job, your skills, and stuff like that. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about when it comes to the things of the word. Outside of Jesus and his teachings, I'm not right. What's your opinion? I have no opinion other than what Jesus has to say. Why? Because I'm conformed to his image. I want to, again, resemble him. I want again to again respect, respect and respond to him, and I also listen. You know, what's up? Represent. represent him. <laughs> Reflect him. So that's number one. Conform to the image. So now watch this now. I cannot do this by myself. I need the Holy Spirit to help me resemble Jesus. To help me respond. Uh, again, respond to Jesus and also have me represent Jesus. 
I, I can't I can't do it in my flesh. And so this is what I this is what I do. Um, basically, every morning during my prayer time, I'll say, Jesus, I need the Holy Spirit to help me to resemble you, to represent you, and to respond to you. I, I, you see, you have to say that. You have to be intentional by saying that. Because see, if you don't resemble Jesus, and if you don't uh, respond to Jesus, and then if you don't represent Jesus, then you'll start representing your church, I mean representing yourself, and responding yourself, and, 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 and again, reflecting on yourself, and representing just like all that resemble yourself, and then how you know with outside Jesus, we, we don't look too good. Amen, <laughs> that's right. We can get real ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Our flesh can go wild. And get out of control. All right? But when you say, Holy Spirit, let me resemble Jesus. Mm. Let me represent Jesus. And let me respond to Jesus. Then guess what? I'm now being conformed to his image. And listen, it's a process. It gets better and better and better and better. And so if you miss it, don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Just get back and start saying that. Start saying that. Start saying that. I don't want to look like Ronnie. I want to resemble Jesus. Yeah, amen. I don't want to represent Ronnie. I want to represent Jesus. I want to respond like Ronnie. I want to respond to Jesus and this conform to his image. Hallelujah. All right, there's one scripture translation says the word conform means to be molded to his image. Yeah. <laughs> I'm molded. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. As the old people said, I'm going to chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. Number two. Number two. The second way I abide in Jesus, listen, is not only do I conform to his image, but also I have the mind of Christ or the mindset of Christ. Yes. If I'm going to abide in his image. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Sometimes I have to get our prayers in. See, abide in Christ. You abide in me. My words abide in you. You can ask. Me. So I got to find a way to abide. How do I know my body in Christ? Well, come on, this image. The second here it is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. He says, For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Watch this. But we have, but we have, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Say, I want to tell you, start saying this every day. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. When you get stuck somewhere, I have the mind of Christ. When you get in doubt, I have the mind of Christ. When you get confused, I have the mind of Christ. When you don't know what to do, I have the mind of Christ. And you start saying, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I let all the demons in hell. I let all the uh, all the imps and all that. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mindset of Christ. Amen. And you just start saying that. As a husband, I gotta say, I have the mind of Christ. When I see that my flesh is getting out of control and I'm getting upset about something, I said, No, Ronnie, this you have the mind of Christ. Okay? And it's like the Holy Ghost just reeled me on back on the end. <laughs> Why? Because I'm abiding in Christ, right? This mindset. Now, this is what it says this. It says, having the mind of Christ means we understand God's plan to bring glory to Himself, provide salvation for sinful mankind, and to live and operate to the kingdom of God's system while living in this worldly system. See, I, see, why? Because Jesus did the number one, Jesus always wanted to glorify his father. Always. He always talked about the father. Let's read it every time he talked about my father. My father. Why? Because when he talked about the father, it glorified and made the father look good. The more, listen, the more you glorify God, the more it makes God look good. In your testimony, you talk about what God has done, not so much what you've done, what God has done for you, what you're doing. You're glorifying God. That's what Jesus did. He always talked about the Father. He said, He has seen me, I've seen what? The Father. 
All right. Then number two, the plan of salvation. Salvation. Jesus, Bible says Jesus came to save and to seek that which was lost. Yes. To seek and save that was lost. That's what that, that's what that's his mindset. He always looked for people to be saved. When I talk to people, I want to know where they're standing. Spiritually. I, 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 I want to know that if they died at night, will they live with Jesus or they live far from Jesus? See, so you want to have that mindset that you want people to be saved. Glory to God. And then here, then the third thing is that you want the mindset of Christ is that people, we live in the kingdom of God system, in this worldly system. Now, how do you know there is this worldly system and there's the kingdom of God system? The kingdom of God system is based on love. All right? The worldly system is based on selfishness. Look at it. Everything's about me. Yeah. Everything's about my feelings. What I think. See, that's the worldly system. So when we have the mind of Christ, we realize that there is a greater system called the kingdom of God system. See, that's why he says over in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. But I really love the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version of Matthew 6, 33. You need to go read it sometime. He says this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. He says, God's way of doing. Yes. <laughs> God's way of doing and being right. And watch this. And all these things will be as you what you get your prayers answered. Yeah. See, it's got to be God's way. Yes. And people don't want the kingdom of God system. Man, I don't believe in all that. Well, okay, you don't believe in all that kingdom of God system. So why do you want me to pray for you? <laughs> okay, you don't have to pray to the world system. Don't pray for the world system. Just live it, and it'll happen to you. But if you want kingdom of God's answer, you gotta put the kingdom of God's system first. His way of doing things. And this is what this mind of Christ. Now, let's give you three ways about talking about this mindset of Christ that he had. First of all, he had a purpose mind or a purpose mindset. Let's look in uh, uh, John chapter 4, verse 34. What? John chapter 4, verse 34. Praise the Lord. And it says this. Thank you. All right, give me some. It says, and Jesus said to them, my food nourishment is to do the will, the pledge of him who sit and to accomplish and completely finish his work. He said, uh, he said my mission is, is to accomplish what the Father wants me to do. And to complete what he wants me to do. Saints, that has to be our purpose mindset. All right? Listen, I don't care whether you are a husband, a wife, a single person, a mother, a grandmother, uh, 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 you're on your business, you, you work at a job, whatever it is, your ultimate goal is, you know what? I have to do what the Lord wants me to do first. That has, that, that, that has, that has to be paramount. That's to be your purpose in life. I mean, yeah, we do a lot of good things, praise the Lord. We go to school and we get education, we have got home, uh, uh, we, we have a good job, we have all those things. Those are good. Don't get me wrong. But our ultimate purpose, so forth, our ultimate purpose, listen to me now, is we have to do what the Father wants us to do. And sometimes people will not understand that. You remember when Jesus was 12 years old and he was in the temple? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for him. You know, he'd been gone for them. And and, and, and and his mother, not your mother, and father Joseph says, you know, Jesus, why do you have us worrying about you? How, why do you treat us a particular way? And this is what Jesus says. You know, I'm paraphrasing. Mom, I love you. Dad, I respect you so much and all. But did you know I had to be about my father's business? And that has to be your purpose. But I have to be about my father's business first. Hallelujah. And and, 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 and and when I'm about my father's business, I'll stay out of your business. Amen. <laughs> I, 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 I don't get to worry about other people's business. Okay, I'm about my father's business. You know, 
People ask me, did you hear about it? I, I said, I didn't know that happened, it did. Well, did you hear about it yet? Did you hear about it? I, I didn't know about it. I said, because I'm so much spending time being by my father's business, all right? I spend 50% of my time minding my father's business, my business, and other people said, leaving your business out. I stay out of your business. <laughs> that has to be your purpose, father, your business. And so that's having a purpose mindset. That's what Jesus said, my food is to do what the father said. We have a mind of Christ, all right? Number two, not only did Jesus have a purpose mind or purpose mindset, but he had a pure mind or pure mindset. Look in First uh, John chapter three, verse one through verse three. I'm talking about abiding in Christ. My mindset: Our Father loves us, for He calls us His children, and that is what we are. Aren't you glad we call children of Father? I, listen, don't you know he loves us? So you need to start saying that, Father, I thank you how much you love me. Yeah. No matter what I'm going through, I thank you how much you love me. Yeah. No matter what's going on around me, I thank you how much you love me. Yes. You love me. Say, praise the Lord. For he calls us his children. And that is what we are. We're children of him. He says, but the people who belong to this world, this don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. They don't. That's why, you know, they, they, they talk the way you do because they don't recognize who you are. You can't be talking to a God's child any kind of way and treating them any kind of way when you know they belong to the Father. Okay? You can't do that, all right? Why? Because they don't know him. They know about him, but they really don't know the Father. They think he's some old man up in the sky, you know, that don't have anything better to do. You know, just put hardships and trials on you. That's all they think about. They don't even know. They don't even know. They don't know Jesus. They don't think about him. They don't know who he is. They don't know what he taught. They don't know what he said. They don't know what he did for them on the cross. They don't know that. All right. They don't know that he loves them. Verse two. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. Hallelujah. See, every day you're getting better. You're getting better to be seen more like Jesus. I don't know everything about it, but I know I'm getting closer to being more like Jesus. I know I'm getting closer to resembling Jesus. I know I'm getting closer to representing Jesus. I know I'm getting closer to respond to Jesus. See, I'm doing that every day, every day, every day. Now watch this. Now watch verse 3 now. He says, and all, and all who have this eager expectation to be more like Christ, what? Will keep themselves pure just as he's pure. You ever talk to people sometimes that says, uh, well, I'm trying to be good. I'm just trying to be good. I can't find a scripture where they ever taught us to try to be good. I said, you know, I'm not trying to be good. I'm just trying to be like Jesus. See, next time somebody say, well, nobody's perfect, I said, you're right. I said, but I'm serving the one who is one, who is perfect. Amen. I'm following the one who is perfect. I'm following the one that never ever was wrong about anything. He was right about everything. He knows everything. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my lover. Praise the Lord. And therefore, I want to be pure like him. Yes. I'm not trying to be good. I just want to be pure like Jesus. So next time they say that, well, you know, nobody's perfect. I say, I swear to the one who is. Amen. <laughs> I swear to the one who is perfect. <laughs> Hallelujah. And guess what? And the Bible says, I want to keep myself pure, just as pure. But I can't do it by myself. I have to have the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to start saying that. Holy Spirit, keep me pure. Yes. Keep me undefiled. Yes. All right? I don't want to be contaminated. When you're pure. Yes. Hallelujah. How do you know there's a difference between uh, you who like to cook, who like to bake cakes and stuff like that? How do you know there's a difference between uh, vanilla flavoring and imitation? Yes. 
Good enough. Yeah. All right. Now you tell I don't cook much in those movies. <laughs> <laughs> but those who, who bake a lot, they know the difference. Yes. I called them one time I went to the store and they told me to get some some uh, <laughs> some pure vanilla flavor. And I came back this big old bottle. I, I got it on sale. I had this big old bottle for about like a dollar and eighty cents. I was gonna save me some money. The <laughs> big old bottle. And, and, and I said, when you got there, I said, I got some vanilla flavor. You know? And uh, I'm gonna say what she said to me, but anyway. <laughs> I said, I should you, you get some pure vanilla flavor. You brought this. <laughs> This cheap uh, <laughs> imitation, yeah. no flavor tasting whatsoever. <laughs> Just for my goodness, I thought I was serving it out. Praise the Lord. Well, then one time uh, I was fixing breakfast for, and uh, you know, and uh, it was going to be just both of us. And I only had, uh, you know, because I, I, I like eating eggs for my breakfast. I like the eggs, you know. And I eat two or three, four eggs, I'll be, I'll be like, and we only had two eggs on Facebook. I said, oh, two eggs. And I said, I'm going to go to the store right now. I said, I know what I'll do with this. I said, uh, uh, I'll add some milk to these eggs. Boy, and I had a big old thing of milk to these eggs. <laughs> Listen, those eggs are so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they're the prettiest eggs you ever seen. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I said, oh, that I said, what she been in one of those? She said, what is this? <laughs> I said, yes, yeah. said, no, what are you? She said, did you add milk to these eggs? I said, why do you say that? She said, because they, they're not pure. They don't taste the real thing. They imitate. She said, don't you ever, ever do that again. Praise the Lord. I said, okay, I'm going to die. You know, why? Because they weren't pure. See, but. I keep myself pure, uncontaminated. Yes. Holy Spirit, keep me uncontaminated. Yes. I want to be pure, I want to be the real deal, I want to be the real thing. Why? Because again, I want to be like Jesus because he is pure. Jesus was not mixed with anything. You know, there's a you know, scripture uh, that talks about how faith as a grain of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people misinterpret that scripture uh, about the mustard seed because they focus just on the size of, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, size of mustard seed, he never did say the size, he said the grain. And, and here's the reason why, because see, the mustard seed is one of the only few seeds that you cannot cross pollinate with it. You, 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 you know, it's so small it never loses its its potency as a mustard seed. You know, there's other seeds you can cross pollinate with, and it changes its 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 its, its makeup, its genetic makeup. But a mustard seed, you can't do that. Why? Because it's so pure. And I don't care what kind of seed you try to cross pollinate with, it won't work. Why? It's the real deal. Well, guess what? You have to have basically a relationship with Jesus so strong. And listen, I said, you know what? I'm not going to let anything cross pollinate me. I'm not anything that influence me. Listen, my faith is going to be so strong that nothing, no matter what problems, no situations, no circumstances, would change what I believe. Amen. It's pure. My faith is pure. My love is pure. My joy is pure. My happiness is pure. I want to be pure. Why? Because I say a Savior who is pure. Amen. And I want to be more like him. Why? When I'm pure, I'm abiding in him. So I got a pure mind. Now, how do I keep myself a pure mind? Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. How do I keep myself with this pure mind? All right? He says, now, this is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. I think this is in the New Living Translation. He says, now, my dear brothers, he says, one final thing. Now, he's talking about this. this one final, so I'm talking about how you keep a pure mind. He says, fix your thoughts. Watch this. On what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. He says, watch this. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep your mind focused on these things. 
Is it honorable? Is it true? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? He says, listen, when you do those things, see, you're having a mind of Christ because all these things that he talked about all the time. He kept these things all the time. So that's why you can't get caught up in a bunch of drama. Yeah. How do you like drama? I, 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 I just, I don't know. I, 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 listen, I, I said, Lord, give me patience. I said, I just want to have a time for a bunch of drama. Yeah. You know? I said, you know, I said, because number one, it's not true, it's not honorable, it's not right, it's not pure, it's not loving, it's not, not out. You know? And, and you try to tell people, this is what you're going to think of. Yeah, I, that, that's you. I said, no, it's for everybody. What you think about. And saints, this is a scripture I go over. See, when I, these scriptures, I give you, these are things I practice over and over and over every day. You got to. Live in this crazy world, you, you better get something out of you. Because <laughs> people call right, wrong, and wrong, right. Yeah. And try to convince you of something that's right is wrong. Yeah. I said, no, that's not right. I said, because it's not based on Jesus. Did Jesus teach that? Well, this is the world teach you. No, that's the world's system. I call a new system called what? The kingdom of God system. And I want to have a pure mind, just like, did you know Jesus' mind was pure all the time? Even when he got around sinners, his mind was pure. Now you got to judge yourself on this because if you're not there, I understand that. But you shouldn't let sinners influence you. Amen. Well, you're not it like everybody else. Good, I'm glad you noticed. Why don't you, be, you know, why don't you be like everybody else? I can't. Why not? Because that won't keep me pure. And my whole idea is to be more like Jesus. And so I have to think like Jesus. Glory to God, the mindset. And then number three, the third one mindset is this. Not only do you have a purpose mind, a pure mind, but also a peaceful mind. Look at John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Saints, I want to tell you, one of the most important things you can have is have a peaceful mindset. I don't care this, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care what kind of job you have, I don't care what hey, stuff. You, 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 you gotta have a peaceful mindset that you have. And here it is, this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, I've told you these things, that in me you may have peace and confidence. In the world, you'll have tribulation and trial and distress and frustration but be of good cheer take courage be confident certain undaunted why because i have overcome the world i have deprived it of power to harm you look and have conquered it for you Hallelujah. now he says and this is a trick question. I'm going to give you a trick question. All right, I want you to think about it. Before you block the answer, I want you to think about it. This is a trick question. Jesus says, in me. In me, in me. What does in me mean? Peace. All right. Peace of what? Peace of mind. Peace of mind, okay. How do I get that peace of mind? Huh? In him, in, 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 in him, in him for what? Abiding him. Abiding him. Yeah. And, and how, how, how do I know I'm abiding in him? What's, what's in me that's know I'm abiding him? His what? His word. See, you only get the peace when his words become your words. Mm -hmm. People say, well, I'm not in, in G. Well, I understand, but what does that mean? See, I don't want us to be just religious. Yeah. I want us to be able to say, I have this peace when Jesus' words become my words. Remember when I said this? Whenever Jesus spoke something, that's his faith. Uh -huh. 
when Jesus says something, that's his faith. Now, how does it, how how does that become our faith? Speak. I speak what? Word. What Jesus yes, word. So you get it. Well, I didn't believe in Jesus. Well, a lot of people believe in Jesus, and they still confused. They still mean as a snake. They still cuss people out. Yeah. And they tell you, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> yeah, they will. Me. I'm talking about, I'm talking about church folk. They mean. Yeah. They be in church, hallelujah, shout, praise the Lord, glory to God. Come out of church. <laughs> praise the Lord, cuss you out. In a minute. And they tell you to believe in Jesus. But see, one thing they can't tell you is they can't tell you his words. Because there's no way possible you will continue to tell me what Jesus said and act that simple way. And that's how you get the peace of Jesus when you say this. So when a problem comes, listen, when a problem says, you know, come. Now, problem? I have peace in Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said that in the world, you come to get me frustrated. You come to get me stressed out. You come to give me tribulation. That's what you come to get. But Jesus comes and says, I will have peace in what he said and what he does and what he commanded. So I choose to have peace in Jesus than what's in the world. Why? Because Jesus has come to deprive me. Of anything that comes to take away my peace. All right. Anything that comes to harm me. Anything that comes to hurt me. Anything that comes to me to get off. He's already conquered it. Yes. Hallelujah. So I speak peace to the storm in the name of Jesus. Yes. That's what Jesus did. Yes. When those storms came, mm -hmm. he said, Peace. Yeah. Mm. Be still. And the waves, and the, the wind, it has a hut and behave itself. See, peace does not just mean absolute confusion. It means a wholeness. It means a soundness. Yeah. <laughs> and you start speaking peace. You start speaking peace. I speak peace in a yes, situation. Yes. I speak peace to my body. I speak peace to my finances. I speak peace to my marriage. I speak peace to my relationship. I speak peace on my job. Amen. God, Jesus. That's how the mindset of Jesus. That's how you abide in Jesus when a storm comes and you say what Jesus says. Yes. That's abiding in Jesus. And his words now abiding in you. So it's abiding in you will start coming out of you. You got it. I know you get it. See, I told you these things that in me and what he said, who he is, what he said, what he taught, what he commanded, see, that you have this perfect peace and confidence. My confidence in what Jesus said, what he taught. That's his faith. So my faith is now I say what he says. But in this world, tribulation, trial, distress, just turn on the news. Just turn it on. You will see every time the news come on, you will see tribulation, you will see trial, you get distressed. The pastor, I'm so stressed out. What can I do? The first thing you do is cut the TV off. That's all hockey problems that we have. <laughs> Stop looking at the 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock daddy. That's that problem right there. And you know somebody call you a bunch of drama, don't answer the phone. Just gonna let go of the door spell. Now, Pastor, do you guys hear me call? No, I do not. You know? Why is that? I said, because I don't want them to help me lose my peace. So I got them to take that call. I just pray. Now when I get prayed to the prayer, then I may call them, I may call them back. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I'm being made real. I'm making y'all make it real. You cannot let people stress you out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they'll try their best. Yeah. And then when you get tired of you, they stop coming to my house and stop come trying to stress me out, you know. They leave your house, I don't know if demons come down. I'm like, no, we can't stay here. <laughs> All right. You ain't gonna stress me out. Yeah. I got these little 12 or 30 year old at school trying to stress me out. I said, no, you won't. Yeah. I said, you're gonna sit somewhere, sit down right now. Sit down. 
You ain't gonna stress me out. Then I'm gonna call my mama. You're gonna be down the number for him. She can stress you out. She ain't gonna stress me out. I'm gonna have peace. When I go to bed at night time, I'm gonna sleep real good. Amen. Why? Because it's in Jesus. Hallelujah. And then the last thing, got to close out. Uh, we're talking about how body of Christ needs to press us. Number one, be performance. Number two, have my, and number three, by walking as Jesus walked. Look at First John chapter two, verse six. Walk like Jesus walked. See, the world will tell you you can't do this. My question is, why did you put in the Bible to begin? All right, walk like Jesus walked. All right, here we go. It says, whoever says he abides in him, all. As a personal debt, watch it, to walk and conduct himself in the same way in which he walked and conducted himself. What's the key thing? Abide. See, I'm telling you folks, this is telling me because I believe in Jesus, I don't abide in Jesus because they have no intention of to walk like he walked. Now you can't do this by yourself. You, you need the work of the Holy Spirit to do it. I understand it. But you gotta start saying today, Holy Spirit, help me to walk like Jesus walked. Like he walked, help me to help me to live like he lived. See, so you start saying that over and over and over again. And start, you know, because again, see, death and power is in the power of your what? Your tongue. I'm gonna show y'all how how power power is. My 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 spiritual grandfather, uh my spiritual grandfather, Brother Kenneth Copeland, he's 80, I think he's about 80, he's about 80, 81, 81, 81. Is he with him? He's 84 by 84. Okay. Did you realize that he, if you look at him, he does not have a gray hair in his head. You ever seen a picture of him? Lately. Okay. And guess what? He don't rinse his hair. He don't color his hair. Ain't it for that one? You know why? Because early he said, "Gray will not come part of my head." Yeah. He started confessing it. Gray, you won't be a part of my head. He started saying it over and over and over again. God of God, I said, "Well, I got a revelation of that." Woo! <laughs> I'm like, woo! Jesus said, ask it shall be given. Seek you shall find. Knock it shall be open. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So one day y'all will see me come up here like, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may put my, put my head under the water. Glory to God, you'll still be black. <laughs> <laughs> Who shall, shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into sea. Shall not doubt his heart, but shall believe those things that said to come to man. He shall have whatever he said. Walk like Jesus walked. Imitators of him. Two areas, and we'll close up. Number one, walk in love. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. Walk in love. See, that's how you relate to See, I want to love like Jesus loved. I want to have compassion like Jesus has compassion for people. All right? He says, live a life filled with love. All right? Following the example of Christ, he loved and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Pleasing aroma to God. Is your love life aroma to God? Does this like Jesus, his love life, it was a sweet, sweet smelling fragrance in the nostrils of God. Okay? And that's why I want to have a love life that smells good in the sight of That's what Jesus did. That's what he, said. he offered himself a sacrifice as a plea to God. And the key is a sacrifice because your flesh is not going to do it. But it's got to be sweet. So I want to love like Jesus. Say this, I want to love, I love like, Jesus like Jesus loved. Now Jesus didn't agree with everybody. He didn't agree with everybody. 
Some things were just wrong, but still he loved them. But we we say that on uh, uh, Miss Camille uh, on prayer last Saturday. You say they just got a little hell out of people. <laughs> they got hell all in them. Anger, arrogance, all that. Yeah. Can't beat the hell out of them. Might just love the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I cuss. They got hell in them. You know they got hell in them. So you love them. Live a life of love. The more they keep having hell, the more they go love. It's a sacrifice. It's not easy. Amen. And then the last thing is this always wanting to please our Heavenly Father. John 8 29, the last one. Last scripture. It says this. And he who sent me is ever with me. My Father has not left me alone. Watch this. I always do what pleases me. That's it. That's going to be your prayer for the message of your Lord. I'm going to do all those things that pleases you. If someone makes me mad what it is, I want to respond in a negative way. I say, Lord, let me do what pleases you. Things I don't understand, instead of getting doubt and worry or whatever, Lord, let me do what pleases you. See, I have to start saying that over and over and over again. Why? Because I'm died in Christ. And the word again says, if I died in Christ, and his words abide in me. I can ask what I will, and it shall be done. So again, number one, I'm conformed to his image. I'm abiding Christ. Number two, I'm having the mindset of Christ. I'm abiding Christ. Number three, I'm walking as Jesus walked. I'm having the mind of Christ. Here by step your feet. We'll Don't make our confessions that we have <sighs> abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ. I've got to do that. I've got to abide in Christ. If I abide in him, his word is abiding me, I can ask what I will do, and it will be done to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to conform to his image. I want to resemble him. I want to represent him. I want to respond to him. Thank you, Jesus. So number one, let's say this confession number one is I confess, I confess that, Jesus that Jesus is always right. Is always number right. two is I confess, I confess that, Jesus that Jesus wants my prayers, wants my prayers to, be to be answered. Number three is I confess, I confess that the body in Christ, Christ and his words abiding in me will lead me to asking to ask of my desires, my desires and having my prayers answered. Number four is I confess, I confess that, I that I will abide in Christ, in Christ by, being by being conformed to his image. To his image. Number five is I, I, I confess that I will abide in Christ, that I will abide in Christ by, having by having the mind of Christ. And number six is I confess that I will abide in Christ by walking, by walking as Jesus walked. As Jesus Let's take our prayer commitments. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I will experience your divine favor through answered prayer. I thank you that Jesus is always right and he wants my prayers to be answered. Because of this, I will abide in Christ and his words, and I can ask what I desire and it will be given to me. I will abide in Christ by being conformed to his image, by having the mind of Christ, and by walking as Jesus walked, I understand that because I'm favored by you, by faith, I receive your amazing divine favor in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, if you watch this broadcast, I just want to go in and want to reiterate again the essence of knowing how much the Father loves you. And he wants you to abide in his son. But how do I do that? Well, first of all, you got to accept the son Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you haven't done that, listen, here's a simple thing. It's called ABC. A says, I admit that I'm a sinner and I deserve to die of my sins. B says, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and now I'm going to repent of all my sins. And C says, I confess him as my Lord and Savior. 
My friends, listen, if you're willing to do that, you're on the first road to not just believing, but abiding in Christ. And so again, we just want you to make that confession. See, your confession will lead to your possession. Now, I like to say this, if you can believe it, you can receive it. If you can name it, you can claim it. And watch this, if you can blab it, you can even grab it. <laughs> it's for you. So again, hey, we're just saying this prayer for you in the name of Jesus, you receive that. So just hold up your hands right now, wherever you are, and just say, Father, I receive you. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior of my life. And I give my life to him. I want to abide in Christ so I can ask what I desire, and he'll be given to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to say congratulations. Listen, your first step you made, glory to God, into the kingdom of God. And listen, there's a phone number that you can call right now and go ahead and give us the information that you have. Leave your phone number and an email address. And we'd be more than happy to get back in contact with you and again, welcome you to the family of God. Maybe you don't have a local church family. You need a local church family. Listen, House of Faith Christians, and I want to recommend it to you. Praise the Lord. And this it is for you. Glory to God can make a difference in your life. So again, that number, you call that number, give us information, we'll get back and contact you. But listen, whatever decision that you make, listen, do it to the glory of God. But remember, you abide in Christ by being conformed to his image. You abide in Christ by having the mindset of Christ. And you abide in Christ by walking like Jesus walked. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. But listen, I'm so glad you hope you enjoyed that word. I pray it will be a blessing to you and some more revelation God will give to you in the name of Jesus. Well, listen, we're going to continue on in worshiping the Lord right now in the spirit of offertory that we have. And we want you to join with us in giving as God has blessed you. Praise the Lord. And you're sworn to this kingdom of God. If you need an offering on the Lord, just raise your hand and we'll come and serve you. And if you're watching this by broadcast and you say, you know what, I want to get in in what I've just received. So it's three ways for how you can just pray in the offering. One is through text giving. There's information about text giving. Secondly, you give online giving through House of Faith Christian Center uh, uh, dot org. Go to that website and find what it says give, donate, follow the instructions to give that. One. But then the third way, you say, you know what? I just wanted to go ahead and I want to uh, sell to a check or to a money order. Then you do that. You go and do that. Send it to our post office box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, uh, House of Faith Christian Center. Post office box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So again, you go ahead and hope you make that check out or money order or make the transaction that they have at House of Faith Christian Center. And remember again, listen, the offering that leaves your hand and never leaves the earth, you just want good seed, good ground. So listen, let me pray for you over your offering right now that God will bless it with anointing right now. But you have to give it because you're not only giving up your offer, you're giving it yourself to the Lord and you're sowing. And listen, I want to tell you, my friend, the Bible says, very good, but give, give, give it to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, run it over, shall man give. So let me pray over your offering right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you uh, for this time of giving of ourselves to you. Father God, thank you for the word that was so rich today, that blessed us so mightily. And we pray, Father God, continue to allow us through the Holy Spirit to be more like Jesus, be conformed to his image, to have the mindset of Christ Jesus, and to walk like Jesus walked. So we thank you, Father God, for you've allowed us to sow to the kingdom of God. And we can believe, receive, Father God, those things we've asked for. It may be jobs, better jobs, it may be raises, bonuses, it may be anointing increase, uh, monies, Father God, relationships, peace of mind, whatever it is so to the kingdom of god and we thank you father god and we give you praise as we lease father god right now this offering we give it ourselves in jesus name we pray amen and amen praise the lord but so glory to god thank you again for just giving and the lord is blessed us in the in the name of jesus and we just honor you and, and bless your name father god and in jesus name that you are his children he loves you very very much and in the name of jesus Amen and amen. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast this morning and uh, pray that you've been rich and blessed. And again, you've studied those notes and, and uh, again, learning more to abide in Christ, not just believing in Christ, but actually truly abiding in Him and let His words abide in you will be a blessing. And we just thank you again. We 
Again, we invite you every Sunday morning to be a part of our worship experience here at House of Faith Christian Center. Uh, praise the Lord. We're located at 2001 Marco Boulevard in Smyrna, Tennessee. Our worship service begins every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. So if you can't make it, you can always tune in Facebook Live at 9.30 a.m. to be a part of our worship service. Or you can watch the broadcast any time of the day and it'll be a blessing to you as well. So House of Faith Christian Center, praise the Lord. Again, Pastor Ronnie Simmons, we have a threefold vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Again, House of Faith Christian Center, we are ministers of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, and I want to leave you these familiar words. Remember Jesus, Lord, and continue to show compassion in your actions. We'll see you next time. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.